I've been a Fallout fan for a very long time now, and if there's anything that I've learned about this series, it's that none of these games are the same. Those of you that don't know what the Honest Opinion series is, it's basically me playing Officer Betas and telling you what I thought. Bear in mind that these games aren't finished, so don't take this as the final product. Choice. Choice is something that we all want in a Fallout game, but if anyone has ever played a Bethesda version of Fallout, then you would know that Bethesda isn't good at making compelling choices that matter in their versions of Fallout. It's just an objective fact, because sometimes their games make you feel like you're on rails. But Bethesda isn't bad at making Fallout games. Where they suck at making choices and decision making, they excel at world building and environmental storytelling, which is basically Fallout 76 in a nutshell. Fallout 76 is a big world with a lot of interesting places to explore. It has old enemies and new enemies that I have not seen before. And most of the time they come in hordes. I never have enough ammo so I have to head for the hills. Exploring Appalachia almost makes you wish you had a party. Because exploring this area can be fucking creepy. What the hell was that? That's right, when exploring I'm always getting the sense that something is following me, and monsters are fucking everywhere in this untamed part of what's left of the US. Walking through every biome, I am always on edge with my gun at the ready, because of how frequent this is. Junk is a key component in this game, more so than it was in Fallout 4. It allows you to create and repair weapons that can decay over time if you don't keep track of them. Junk is also used for building your camp. They have also added a new feature that we've seen in 3 in New Vegas, but not so much in Fallout 4, and that's ammo crafting. So this makes junk a necessity. Player beware. If you pick up junk, be sure to go to a bench and scrap that junk, because it really helps on carrying weight. The only thing that don't scrap are baseballs and bottles because they are used for either bombs or picking up water that you can later purify. But if you don't want them, you can just scrap them manually. So uh, just be aware of that. Fallout 76 has way more weapons than Fallout 4. They're bringing back classics like the grenade machine gun from Fallout New Vegas and the Chinese assault rifle from Fallout 3. They're also adding new weapons, which I just so happen to stumble upon, but they are locked behind a level system, which I actually like because it gives me a better sense of progression. Like, oh, I want to level up so I can finally use this. This is also the same for power armor pieces and regular pieces. So if you ever find power armor, you won't be able to wear the armor pieces until you're a certain level, but you can still wear the chassis, which negates all fall damage. But I believe it doesn't take into account the armor pieces that you're wearing underneath, so I think it's best for you to just store it back at your base, until you can use it. Camps. It's essentially like the settlement system from Fallout 4, except it's far more organized, has more variety, and it's far more useful in this game than it was there. The biggest difference is that you have to search throughout the world for plans. Plans let you unlock things to build, because the way that it's supposed to go, your character doesn't know how to build things, so you are tasked to unlock things by finding plans to build every object in your camp, that or trade with other players to see if the plans that they have you might need or want. Workshops. I didn't get to do this, but these are areas that you can conquer for resources, and this is territorial, so it'll get attacked by other players or other mobs. It actually adds something really interesting that I wish Fallout 4 would have had, but... We'll see how it goes here. There are diseases that are in the game, and they can mutate you, and they could either be a good thing or a bad thing. It just really depends on if you want to build something in those categories. If not, then you can get rid of them with a disease cure. When it comes to story and lore in each area, if you look hard enough, in every area, you could find out what happened to the people in this area. Environmental storytelling is Bethesda's forte. And this is something that I like because I feel like a detective, and usually it's either a sad story or lore that ties back to previous fallouts. But the biggest problem with this is that we live in a day and age when people have low attention spans. They don't want to sit down and read. They prefer an NPC to tell them exactly what's going on, rather than interpreting it for themselves. I just don't think people like to read. And I should know, because I'm in that camp. Now, a lot of people do have legitimate criticisms, like, you know, no choice being in the game. But again, I have to say that Bethesda isn't really good when it comes to choice, so really they're just going with their strong suit in this game. The graphics? I think Angry Joe said it best when he said, This engine needs to be taken outside and shot, because in the year 2018 going on 2019, this game is nearly almost outdated. At least that's what it looks like to me. Optimization? Uh, it ran pretty well for me. Um, there was maybe like one or two hiccups here and there, but nothing too bad. Although the one thing that really uh, fucking d d random is this giant like banging sound. That scared the ever-living shit out of me, like, what the fuck was that? Hope they fix that. 
quest. There are plenty of quests to keep you occupied for a while, but when it comes to replayability, I honestly don't think that they're trying to make this game replayable. I think what their plan is is to keep the game constantly updated with new content, kind of like Elder Scrolls Online. So they want you to keep the same character, but you could switch out perk cards to try out a new build. At least that's what I think. Actually, now that I think about it, you can edit your character on the fly. Actually, I think I heard somewhere that they said that the vaults were going to be like dungeons, so maybe this is kind of like ESO. So yeah, maybe that's what they're trying to do. Hmm. Perk cards. So perk cards are a little different from Fallout 4. You can actually switch them out for another perk card in case you want to do something else. You can upgrade the perk card, but you can't put it onto a special stat unless that special stat actually has the amount that's required. So if you have a card that has two and you have a stat that has only two, then that one card will take up two slots. That makes any sense but there are a lot of perk cards and some that i haven't even gotten a hold of yet but the cool thing about it is that you can actually trade it with other people in case you know you need something that they have or you want to try out another build like if you're trying to go a melee person or if you're trying to do a, like a heavy weapon sort of deal or if you're trying to do a light weapon or rifle or you could switch it out is what i'm trying to say pvp um there wasn't too much pvp in this game surprisingly like i would run into players but we would just kind of like say hi and then just like walk you know do our own things like i was shot at like once but it, that guy was just trying to get my attention i think he was trying to talk to me through a mic but i didn't have my mic on so you know there needs to be push to talk in the game i did see a couple of wanted people and i wanted to go get them but by the time i got to there the system basically ended so i didn't get to do that but yeah pvp's in the game and i never really got to experience it because it didn't seem like a whole lot of people wanted to fight. Not that I don't like that they don't want to fight, you know. I honestly think that this game should have been a co-op game first, and then a multiplayer game. Like, you know, instead of just going straight from single player to multiplayer, acting like they know what they're doing. You know, I hardly scratched the surface with this beta because there was just so much to do. But overall, I had fun and I generally enjoyed it, and I can't wait until it releases. In no way am I recommending anyone who thinks that Fallout New Vegas is better for obvious reasons. You're probably just better off checking out Fallout Miami or Fallout New California Republic. Actually, not NCR, because the she in the mod speak Japanese when they're supposed to speak Chinese, but that's just me. Will I do more videos on Fallout? Probably not, unless you guys want me to. But more than likely, I'm just going to stick with the tactical games, but uh, had fun playing this. Probably just going to play this in the background and toss up a random dude. Well, I'm just going to leave you with this random encounter that I found while I was playing in the game. Did you hear something? Of course not, because you're dead. It's not enough that I am tethered to an invisible point forever, but the nickname so uncouth. None of the other volunteer bots had idiotic names. It's just so odd to see humans again. Well, the non-rotten kind Anyway, if your can doesn't have all the necessities, consider using irradiated garbage to add that special touch. Miguel used to be laid back, but these days he's just intense. It never gets old, unlike Miguel's decomposing remains. Miguel, you should have followed your own advice and built turrets and walls and all those things. Why didn't you? An average volunteer takes 132 minutes to set up a camp for the first time. Responder Miguel set up this camp in only 9,999 minutes. Bravo, you know I've been tethered to Miguel for years. Years standing here with his rotten corpse. And you know what? I hate camping. Right after the responders formed, we trained dozens of volunteers to build camps 